With the addition of the Gunsmith in Modern Warfare 2019, there has never been more customization to your loadout in Call of Duty. Some might argue it's a little overwhelming, and although I will say things like weapon tuning in Modern Warfare 2 were a little too much for me, with said Gunsmith, we now have hundreds, maybe even thousands of attachments to choose from. And within those hundreds, I guarantee there are a few you never knew existed or completely forgot about. So today I wanted to share with you the entire history of forgotten attachments in Warzone. Criteria is pretty simple here, it just needs to be something you attach to your weapon through the Gunsmith. Comment your favorite Warzone attachment ever. You probably remember the classic underbarrel explosive grenade launcher that's been a staple since Call of Duty 4, but did you know that there were six other different types of underbarrel launchers in Warzone 1? Aside from the classic high explosive we all know and love, or hate, there was an incendiary noob tube which pretty much shot thermite grenades and left a fire kind of like a Molotov would as well. I personally didn't know this was in the game until doing research for this video. Then you had the underbarrel shotgun which I know wasn't a launcher but we'll go ahead and lump it in here. Most of you probably remember this but wish you forgot about. Seriously, probably one of the most broken metas we've ever ever seen and you can check it out in my history of broken guns video right here but wait till after this one then there was not only concussive but also a flash underbarrel launcher these pretty much acted one on the same one was a stun grenade one was a flash grenade but you know shooting it out of your grenade launcher then we had the snapshot grenades which is another underbarrel launcher i didn't know about these are pretty cool because you could shoot these at or around the house and once they detonated you could see anyone inside or outside of it however the most practical underbarrel in my opinion mind you none of these are all that practical but if i had to use one it would be the smoke screen underbarrel since you're pretty much always is gonna find an opportunity to use a smoke grenade in any given match. What I found really interesting about these underbarrels is that they actually took launcher ammo and didn't dig into your lethal ammo whatsoever. And since you could carry an additional six launcher rounds, you had seven of whatever underbarrel you wanted to use. That's why I said the smoke was the best one because having seven smoke grenades in Warzone 1 was just totally unheard of. Mind you, this is before stowing extra of anything was in the game. Not to mention, if you're playing with the full squad, they probably have extra launcher ammo they've accumulated during the game, so all I have to do is assign one player to be the designated underbarrel barrel smoke grenade launcher goblin and give all your launcher ammo to them once they run out. That way, in theory, you have a total of like 28 smoke grenades to use. Another reason I think these are impractical is that the grenade launcher itself, no matter which ammo you're using, it just like doesn't really shoot that far. I swear you can throw grenades farther than this grenade launcher will go and it feels like it barely even has any airtime. Like it goes down like immediately. Like you have to like shoot this thing straight up if you wanted to get any height. And that certainly isn't helping its case. Specifically, the traditional grenade launcher that explodes really doesn't even do all that damage unless it's like towards V. Vehicles. Later in Warzone 2, we even got a drill charge underbarrel, which is kind of fun, I think. It's kind of cool to use an attachment slot on having an alternate ammo type, but other than that, these are pretty useless around the board. Except for that cursed Famas underbarrel. There are a lot of similar attachments to these ammo types, but I'm going to go ahead and use the M4 as the baseline here. First, you had the SOCOM 458 rounds, and these were the definition of a swing for the fences attachment. They roughly doubled your damage, honestly, maybe even more than doubled it, but restricted you to a 10 round magazine and significantly increased your recoil. So sure, when you hit your shots, they hit hard, but when you only had 10 chances, and those 10 chances were even harder to control, this really wasn't all that practical. It's a funny alternative to the M4, and I'm sure its TTK was probably one of the highest in the game, considering it's still was fully auto but like i said really just all or nothing here even if you miss just like one or two shots you're probably gonna lose your gunfight you could maybe pull this off in solo since you could focus on one player at a time and if you really wanted to you could change it to semi-auto and use it kind of like a dmr then there was the nine millimeter magazine which reduced your recoil reduced your damage increased your mobility but restricted you to a 32 round magazine this time i personally think this was a little more useful than the socom rounds and that you had a little more forgiveness but i think we all can agree that you're much better off just using a normal smg in place of the nine millimeter M4. Another weird thing about this magazine attachment as well as the SOCOM rounds is that it still took AR ammo, so even if you did want this to substitute your close range SMG, you're still going to be using the same ammo type for your primary and secondary, assuming you're using an AR for your other gun. I know for Warzone 1 there's a couple other like magazine attachments like this, like I think the AMAX had something similar to the SOCOM rounds as well, but I'm not going to dive into those, I think like you get the picture with the M4. These alternate magazine types honestly walked so that the conversion kits we have today could run. Spoiler alert, this is the only stock attachment on this entire list. The Finn LMG was nothing special on its own until you decided to add the chainsaw stock to it. This pretty much turned the gun into a hipfire minigun. With an insane amount of barrels to choose from, you could kit this out to be a close range quick killer or a long range laser. Although it didn't necessarily excel in either of those categories, it was a lot of fun to use regardless. If you ever played the night vision mode in Modern Warfare 19, it kind of acted like that canted ADS sight in a way. I do think it's worth mentioning that the Finn at one point actually had the best TTK out of any long range 
range gun for the longest time. But people strayed away from it due to its mobility and reload time, just not being like super practical. Also, hitting all your shots at range was difficult since you were pretty much hip firing the whole time. And if you weren't using a laser, all you had to rely on was that little white dot in the center, which took some getting used to for sure. Also, the whole time you were shooting, you were at a complete standstill. You could not be strafing or anything. This gun did make a comeback on Rebirth Island since it was much more close quarters and was actually pretty fun to use. One of the more unique guns we've ever seen in Warzone. Uh -huh. I honestly bet you do remember this attachment, the SPP 10 round magazine for the AS Val. I also talk about this in my History of Broken Guns video, so I don't want to be too redundant here. I'm going to be really quick and short. Similar to the SOCOM rounds, it increased your damage but reduced your magazine size to just 10. But a weird thing about this was it increased your bullet penetration. It let you shoot through like the entire map. That is not an understatement. It was a really weird state of the game because people would throw snapshot grenades at you, find out where you were, and shoot you through an entire building. Truly one of the worst exploits that's ever made it to live servers in Warzone. <laughs> I think when it comes to reticles, it really just comes down to preference, and I would even go more so when it comes to sniper reticles. The 20x scope is pretty self-explanatory. It's a sniper scope that has a variable zoom up to 20 times. The beauty of it was, it was just as far as you wanted to zoom in or zoom out, it wasn't like set distances. So that was pretty cool. You weren't stuck being too zoomed in or too zoomed out. It was wherever you wanted it to be at the time. This made it easy for short, medium, and long range sniping. Emphasis on the long. Oh, and another big plus for this was that there was no sniper glint whatsoever. I'm pretty sure it was a bug, and I don't know how they let this slip through the cracks because this is the farthest a sniper has ever been able to zoom in in Warzone ever, and having no sniper glint means you're shooting someone across the map and they don't even know where they're getting shot from. The major drawbacks were the sway, the ADS time, mobility, and overall clunkiness that came with like going between each zoom level, but I think this was a great addition to Warzone and something that should have been brought back or like some type of variance. I know we have a lot of sniper scopes nowadays, but I don't think a single one of them is 20 times. Roast me in the comments if I'm wrong. I probably am wrong because I just use the same sniper scopes. This was the best for traditional long range sniping on Verdansk. Using the 20x scope zoomed in all the way to the max means you would see players you would never be able to see before, which made long range sniping a blast. As far as balancing, the only thing that was broken was that there was no sniper glint, which I'm pretty sure they ended up fixing. But towards the end of Warzone 1, the game really turned into like quick scopes and like mobility and fast snipers. And obviously the 20x scope just like nuked that for any gun. So this gun completely got swept under the radar and no one ever used it again. I know I talked about this gun in my Forgotten Guns video, which you should also totally watch after this, but I want to focus more on the sniper attachment this time. We know there was a lot going on with this gun. It was a laser gun from World War II, which was weird out of place in its own right. But what people forgot was that it had a high caliber magazine conversion kit that turned the gun into a nearly hit scan sniper that would one shot. It functioned similar to the Moore sniper with the charge barrel on it, where you can hold the fire button for like one second, and once you release it, it would have a one shot potential. It felt weird that an assault rifle could become a one shot sniper, and even with the conversion kits today, we still don't have anything quite like this. I think a lot of people forgot about this gun entirely, more so the sniper attachment, because since this is like the last season before Warzone 2, and also is probably more useful on Caldera, which we all know most people avoided playing at all costs. This is yet another really cool sniper scope we've seen in Warzone. You can actually use it right now if you want to. At the launch of Warzone 2, they decided to add this rangefinder scope that calculates the bullet drop for you. You simply aim down your sights, decide where you wanted to shoot, then press shift, and it would tell you exactly how far away your target was. Then a second reticle would drop down to where your bullet would actually be hitting at the range you had just selected. So no matter how far away someone was from you, you could guarantee a headshot if you had zeroed them incorrectly. This was a cool utility to the scope, but if I'm being honest, I don't think it's all that good. The majority of the time, you're going to be shooting someone who's moving, which this scope doesn't calculate bullet travel time, only the drop off. So that means you still have to lead your shot normally. Not saying that it should calculate bullet travel time as well. Honestly, I don't even know how that would happen. And if it did, it would be really broken. But a lot of people were like, oh, this gun aims for you and calculates it for you, which I think is just like not true at all. Sure, it makes long range sniper battles easier than ever, especially when you're leaning towards that like over 400 meter mark. But really, this is only useful when your target is standing completely still. Also, when you factor in that one shot sniping wouldn't come to Warzone 2 until the second half half its life cycle, this scope would just be a cool concept, but have no place in the meta. So these are the attachments that change the rate of fire on a gun and maybe they add recoil and damage kind of like the SOCOM rounds we've already talked about, only these ones actually dictate the rate of fire as well. The interesting thing about this was that there were some really weird variants to this. The Fennec had a double tap mod that had your magazine size restricted to 12. Yes, 12 bullets in an SMG. Granted, this thing hit super hard, but like the M4 SOCOM rounds, if you missed any shots, you were pretty much done for. Then later on, we have the TR guys, which had a single tap mod that was actually pretty decent and I thought was like a better alternative than the gun itself being full 
fully automatic. I think even the STB556 had a single tap mod that wasn't half bad. Nothing crazy, but a nice way to change up how the gun traditionally worked. Like I said, these fire aid alternatives kind of blossomed into the conversion kits we have today. The Hemlock was an amazing gun and probably most people's favorite meta gun during Warzone 2. But right after it was introduced, there was a way to make it even better. This was with a 300 blackout ammo that increased the damage and reduced your velocity by a lot. The only thing was, it was lying about decreasing your velocity whatsoever, which means more damage with absolutely no penalty. So yeah, this thing was pretty broken. This only lasted like a week or two because they would patch the blackout rounds and perform the way they were intended, but people definitely made the most of it while it lasted. Since Warzone 3's launch every week, they seem to have a weekly challenge that adds a new aftermarket part to the game. However, in Season 1's Battle Pass, they add the Jack Purifier Underbarrel Flamethrower. You can currently add this to any assault rifle or battle rifle, and let me tell you, this thing just sucks. Not only does it have zero range, you also need to hit them for several seconds before they die. Also, if they have EOD, it takes double that time. This is a fun addition because as far as I know, we've never had a straight up flamethrower in Warzone, but I wouldn't be mad if they buffed it a little bit. Even after watching gameplay, it is a little bit better than I give it credit for. It Maybe it's not totally worthless, but definitely not something I would run. Like I said with the underbarrel grenade launchers, it's kind of a fun little addition that you can even like use an attachment slot on this to have essentially a third gun, but I think our next edition is better. With Season 2 of Warzone 3, we got another aftermarket attachment, being the Jack Lim Ripper. This one is just a chainsaw added to your gun, Gears of War style. This one is far more convenient, especially when you consider in Warzone, melee is just way more common. Another funny aspect about this attachment is that it just straight up counters riot shielders. Like, you don't even have to get around them or behind them, you can hit them straight on, and it'll just go right through their riot shield and kill them. Kinda nice having, like, a straight up counter to riot shielders. I would still never use this, but I'm way more likely to use this than the purifier. But that's the entire history of forgotten attachments in Warzone. If there's an attachment you think should have been on this list that isn't, please let me know down in the comments below. I know the Rytec Sniper, Explosive, and Thermite rounds I've mentioned in the last two videos, so I didn't include those. And if you want to hear me talk about the Rytec, you can watch either of these videos because I talk about it in both of these videos. Also, if you're still watching this video, you must have liked it at least a little bit, so maybe consider subscribing. Check out some of my other Warzone history content. Stop by one of my live streams right here on YouTube. Don't even have to go to another app. Join my Discord if you're feeling crazy. And if you liked, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. Comment if you like. And as always, Thank you so much for watching.